Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Pentagon and this unique ceremony in honor of Corporal William Kyle Carpenter, United States Marine Corps. In a ceremony held yesterday at the White House, the President of the United States presented Corporal Carpenter with our nation's highest and most prestigious military award for valor, the Medal of Honor. Today, we of the United States Marine Corps are privileged to pay tribute to this bravest of warriors by formally inducting him into the Pentagon's most sacred place, the Hall of Heroes. We are very pleased to also welcome Corporal Carpenter's mother and father, who proudly accompany their son on this special occasion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party. Please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem, which will be performed by the baritone vocalist of the President's Own United States Marine Band, Master Sergeant Kevin Benear, and the Marine String Quartet. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General James F. Amos. Thank you, Master Guns. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Secretary Hagel, uh, Secretary Garcia, Secretary Work, uh, my good friend uh, Bob Hale. Uh, Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. The uh, Kyle's family, his mom and dad, his two brothers. Uh, we've been with them now for the last several days. And Secretary, in this audience are also Kyle's mates from Kilo Company, 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines. So as you know uh, well, there's a great uh, brotherhood uh, that exist between uh, those that fight together side by side and sacrifice together side by side day after day. So we welcome the members of the Marines of Kilo 29, the storied battalion of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, welcome everybody to this ceremony, the Hall of Heroes. Uh, the truth is, as you look at the names, <clears throat> 3,489 uh, Americans have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Uh, the medal came into existence in 1861 in November for the Department of the Navy. And in February of 1862, uh, Congress passed this and the President signed the law to award the Medal of Honor for our U.S. Army brothers. And since then, 3,849 Americans have been awarded the medal. I mentioned this morning that there are only 79 living today, and that includes those that are sitting in the audience here today. Uh, and uh, many that are not. But what's significant is our numbers are dwindling. Uh, it was not many years ago that I attended a function up in Washington, in New York City, uh, for the Medal of Honor Society, and at that time there was about 115 still alive. So almost on every given month, we're losing a great patriot. And you think about what they represent to our nation. 
and what they mean to um, um, in America uh, throughout our history, periods of being war torn. Our Medal of Honor recipients, don't, they didn't ask for it. They didn't step out to be heroes, but yet they represented the very best that America had to offer. And I would argue that Kyle Colonel or Corporal Kyle Carpenter is exactly that type of great American patriot. There's probably no more humble man that wears that cloth around his neck than the one whose, whose plaque will be unveiled here today. Our keynote speaker, ladies and gentlemen, knows, uh, knows sacrifice, knows hardship, he knows it well, having served in the jungles of Vietnam alongside of his brother as a infantryman and as a sergeant in our great United States Army. Like uh, Corporal Kyle Carpenter, Chuck Hagel knows what it's like to sacrifice and to give of himself and to watch his fellow soldiers give up their lives for our nation. He also understands the unmistakable sound of a firefight, and he also understands what it's like to be wounded in combat. He is not only our Secretary of Defense, which automatically gives him great deference with all of us, but he's also a great patriot. He's a man of selfless service. He didn't need to come to this job. He had plenty of work to do uh, serving our nation, and yet he came. He answered the call just like many of the patriots down here on the front line. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give me and join me in a warm welcome to the Secretary of Defense, our Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel. General Amos, uh, thank you, and to uh, all of you here today, uh, thank you. I uh, am grateful to be part of this uh, afternoon's recognition of a very special individual that much of America heard about yesterday uh, when uh, President Obama not only was part of uh, reciting the official words uh, which uh, designated Kyle Carpenter uh, as America's uh, newest entrant into a pretty select group of great Americans, uh, the Medal of Honor Society. Uh, but uh, President Obama talked about uh, the different dimensions of, of Kyle Carpenter's mm -hmm. life, where he came from, how he was raised, recognition of his parents who are with us today, his two brothers, his mother and his father, uh, relatives, friends, and uh, as General Amos noted, those uh, yesterday who served with Kyle, uh, as well as Marines uh, from all over. And I know, um, as the Commandant often has told me, as well as the Sergeant Major, uh, you can never have too many Marines in a room. Um, and I say that as a former arm, Army, um, unworthy Army uh, <laughs> infantryman. Uh, but uh, it is a recognition, as General Amos said and the President said yesterday, of who we are. Uh, and what Kyle Carpenter did, what he represents, what he embodies, and what he reflects uh, is about our society, about what's good in our society, the quality of our people, and the strong beliefs our people have in each other. And that act of heroism performed by Kyle Carpenter uh, was, was a pretty clear sampling of uh, who we are uh, as Americans. It doesn't mean we're better than anybody else, uh, but uh, we, we have a unique way of taking care of each other. And I think, uh, again, what Kyle Carpenter was recognized for yesterday at the White House, as he is this afternoon at the Pentagon, is about that, uh, as it is about this uh, pretty unique uh, man. As Jim uh, Amos noted, the Medal of Honor was established 153 years ago. and. I want to just remind everyone here uh, the specifics of 
what it takes, the criteria to be awarded this, and for a Marine to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the deed must be proved by incontestable evidence of at least two eyewitnesses. It must be so outstanding that it clearly distinguishes the recipient's gallantry beyond the call of duty from lesser forms of bravery. It must involve the risks of one's life, and it must be the type of deed which, if the honoree had not done it, would not subject him or her to any justified criticism. And as uh, General Amos noted, there aren't uh, many Medal of Honor winners still with us today uh, in, our, in our world. But this man is uh, one of the unique uh, people who will continue to shape and influence and impact uh, our society for many years to come. I, uh, I think as we think through all of this, and I know his parents and his brothers, and his relatives, his grandmother, um, as they have uh, heard so much about their son the last few days, and they will go back home uh, tomorrow, and as Mrs. Carpenter said, get right back to cleaning the house and cooking <coughs> meals and doing what most people do. Um, they have been changed too. But in many ways, in probably most ways, they didn't hear anything new that they didn't already know about their son. But they let us, all of us, hear more about that story, about this special story uh, of their son. I also um, uh, want to recognize and note that although he couldn't be here with us in Washington, uh, Corporal Nick Frazio, uh, Kyle's uh, best friend in the Marines, uh, who Kyle literally saved his life, uh, a wounded warrior who is uh, recovering from his wounds. We want to acknowledge Nick and his family for his service and the service and sacrifice that his family has made. Uh, and to all the Marines who served with you, Kyle, uh, during the battle uh, and uh, every day that our Marines serve this country. Yesterday, as I noted, when President Obama read the citation, told the story uh, about uh, what happened on November 21st, 2010, at patrol base Dakota in Afghanistan. Uh, he laid out uh, the specifics, but the weight of what was on these Marines that day. And I want in particular to, uh, with his permission, to read an excerpt from what uh, uh, Sergeant Jared Lilly, a hospital uh, and a hospital corpsman, Chris friend, who were with him and who helped uh, both of these brave, brave uh, soldiers, Nick and Kyle, get on the helicopter that day. What Sergeant Lilly wrote in his journal a week after Kyle was wounded. And he said, it's been seven days now since the worst day of my life when all hell broke loose. The sight was horrific. He lays there lifeless as I put tourniquets on his arms. When Carp resumed consciousness, he asked, am I going to die? I told him no. He was too strong for that. I almost broke down several times, but I couldn't let my friend down. It seemed like an eternity before the medevac arrived. We put Kyle on the stretcher and had to put Nick on a poncho blanket. We carried them to the landing zone and used our bodies to cover them from the dirt and the dust that the helo had kicked up. As we loaded him on the bird, I yelled that I love him. I was a zombie, complete broken down zombie walking back, and sat down and broke down in tears. I began to yell about how we did it all wrong, how we had failed him. I felt helpless, and all I could do was pray. 
In speaking about his service, his injury, and his recovery, Kyle has said, the light is on me right now. But I'm hoping what happened to me will help remind people that things like this happen. They happen every day. And people just don't see it. Well, Kyle's work and dedication have helped him with all that. And he's helped make an awareness to what happens in war very real. His recent marathon, his tough mutter, and his parachute jumping <clears throat> remind us of the resilience of more than 52,000 American service members wounded in our nation's wars since 9-11. The devotion of Kyle's family to his recovery, his mother Robin trudging, trudging through the snow, that's unusual for South Carolina girls, <laughs> trudging through the snow across a base to get a vanilla milkshake when that was the only thing Kyle could taste. This devotion reminds us of the service and sacrifice of all of our military families and the skill and dedication of Kyle's military medical team, some of whom are here today. Some were introduced by the President yesterday at the White House. I want to add uh, my thanks on behalf of our country and all in the Department of Defense for what you did for Kyle. And Kyle has acknowledged many times and recognized you many times, as he has said, for putting him back together pretty well. Thank you. And they've recited uh, a number of times the joy they all felt when Kyle made that first lap around the hospital ward. And it does, again, remind us of the extraordinary talent and support of all of our people, in particular our medical services and our medical providers, how they continue to marshal their passion and their feeling about all of us, and how they heal and help us heal these tragic wounds of war. In the new life that Kyle is building after all of this, after his military service, we see the enormous potential of a new generation of veterans. Uh, many are in this room uh, today. Last fall in his first semester at the University of South Carolina, Kyle earned a 3.9 grade point <coughs> average. Now, I could say for Marine, that's unusual. But, uh, <laughs> It's a joke. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, oh, I'm nervous saying something like that with the Sergeant Major sitting here. I, in pursuing higher education and advanced job training, Kyle is joined by more than one million veterans, service members, and their families who have taken advantage of the post-9-11 GI Bill. A new great generation, a new great generation that, as President Truman said of a previous one, will do in peacetime for this great nation what they did for us in wartime. But just as we honor Kyle's valor and his sacrifice, we also remember the fallen. We remember those who lost from this war. And in particular, we remember those we lost from Kyle's platoon. Lance Corporal Timothy Jackson and Lance Corporal Dakota House. We remember the 453 Marines and all the 2,362 American service members who have given their lives in Afghanistan in Operation Enduring Freedom. We also honor the service and sacrifices of our troops returning home as they heal their wounds, as they build new lives for themselves, our country, and their families in and beyond military service. The poet Carl Sandburg once said, Valor is a gift. Those having it never know. They never know for sure if they have it until the test comes. Today, by inscribing Kyle's name in this Hall of Heroes, we honor that gift. We honor all who serve. We honor the Marine Corps. 
We honor all the Marines. We honor Kyle's family. And we honor a hero, William Kyle Carpenter. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, the Honorable Juan Garcia. Secretary Hagel, Commandant Amos, Marines, ladies and gentlemen, and especially to Kyle's parents, Jim and Robin, and his young twin brothers. Um, it's an honor to be here on behalf of Secretary Mavis, who's in Pascagoula. We're having a ceremony for one of our newest ships, USS Tripoli. Uh, Jim and Robin, I also have a set of twin boys, and I wonder if you've ever uh, received an email like the one I recently did. It seems the school district was having the big spelling bee, and my wife sent me the following email, subject, good news and bad news. She said, one boy is the new district spelling champion. The other boy was escorted out because he couldn't be quiet. I don't know if that, uh, um, since President Lincoln signed Public Resolution 82 into law in 1861, authorizing a Naval Medal of Honor, Marines have run to the sound of chaos. Their names grace the walls of this hall. So what makes a 21-year-old Lance Corporal make the selfless decision that Kyle did on that March day in Marja? Because it's not a natural one. The ingrained human instinct honed over millions of years of evolution is self-preservation. When that grenade landed on the roof of that mud hut, Kyle had a nanosecond to make the biggest decision of his life. He could have dove off the roof of that Root off that structure, and there would have been no shame. But in his moment of truth, in his crucible, in that instant that we've all wondered down deep what we do, how we would react, Kyle Carpenter chose to give his life. But as instantaneous as that decision was, I suspect the split second calculus that went into it was actually 21 years in the making. That decision was the combined experiences and influences of his entire young life all brought together into one blinding instant. That decision that day factored in the love of his buddies from Fox Company 29, including Corporal Nick Euphrasio, a bond that can only under be understood by those who've lived in the mud and gone showerless for months, betting their life every day that the Marine next to them has their back. Kyle's decision that day was informed by the ethos and the tone set and maintained by the Marine leadership here today. An ethos that says, Devil Dog, you are responsible for every Marine junior to you. I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle's reaction and his decision that day was aided by some instructor at Camp Geiger back at the School of Infantry who had a special impact on him. I know his decision was affected by a drill sergeant back at Paris Island who dramatically helped shape the way young recruit Carpenter saw the mm -hmm. world. I bet part of the formula that day included the thoughts of the dozens of friends from South Carolina and Mississippi who had received prayer cards from Mrs. Carpenter, asking them to keep her son in their thoughts during his deployment. I suspect part of Kyle's thinking that day was shaped perhaps by a special coach from back at Wyman King Academy back in Batesville, Leaves Leesville, where he played baseball and football. Or maybe a special teacher from back home in Gilbert who recognized his unique potential. Or maybe a faith leader along the way who, who inspired him. I know his little brothers, Peyton and Price, factored into his decision that day. As their big brother, he wanted to be their role model and set an example for the men they have become. And of course, Kyle's decision was shaped viscerally by his parents, Jim and Robin, and the values and the priorities and the morals and the ideals they instilled and imparted to him as they raised him. All that upbringing was with him that day when he made his fateful decision. So to all of you in this room who played a role in grooming and creating and building this exceptional young American hero, the Department of the Navy thanks you. When his name goes up on the wall, making him part of the elite fraternity of those who've earned our nation's highest award, you will have each played a critical role in putting it there. Thank you and God bless. At this time, we would like to invite Secretary Hagel, General Amos, and the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major Michael Barrett, along with Corporal Carpenter and his parents, 
to join Secretary Garcia on stage for the official unveiling of the Hall of Heroes inscription to our honoree. <coughs> The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, June 19, 2014, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Lance Corporal William Kyle Carpenter, United States Marine Corps, for service as set forth in the following citation. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as an automatic rifleman with Company F, 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines, Regimental Combat Team 1, 1st Marine Division Forward, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force Forward, in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom on 21 November 2010. Lance Corporal Carpenter was a member of a platoon-sized coalition force comprised of two reinforced Marine rifle squads partnered with an Afghan National Army squad. The platoon had established patrol base Dakota two days earlier in a small village in the Marja district in order to disrupt enemy activity and provide security for the local Afghan population. Lance Corporal Carpenter and a fellow Marine were manning a rooftop security position on the perimeter of the patrol base Dakota when the enemy initiated a daylight attack with hand grenades, one of which landed inside their sandbag position. Without hesitation, and with complete disregard for his own safety, Lance Corporal Carpenter moved toward the grenade in an attempt to shield his fellow Marine from the deadly blast. When the grenade detonated, his body absorbed the brunt of the blast, severely wounding him, but saving the life of his fellow Marine. By his undaunted courage, bold fighting spirit, an unwavering devotion to duty in the face of almost certain death, Lance Corporal Carpenter reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps and the United States Naval Service. The Hall of Heroes contains the names of the 3,478 servicemen and women in our nation's history who have been awarded the Medal of Honor. Corporal Carpenter now joins these illustrious warriors as the 3,479th Medal of Honor recipient to be inducted into the Hall of Heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, Corporal William Kyle Carpenter, United States Marine Corps. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as Master Sergeant Benear and the Marine String Quartet perform the fifth verse of the Navy hymn, Eternal Father. Mm -hmm. 